head coach of the Chicago Bears and the NFL Coach of the Year, Matt Nagy. I'll say this, coming in here, a few things. My days, uh, going back to two years ago, uh, when I was standing up here as an offensive coordinator, it was, I had a lot more time. And so I'm on the plane today, and uh, you, you probably will believe me when I tell you, and I hate to admit it, but I was just telling myself the whole way here, just talking through, thinking about what do I want to talk about tonight. And uh, Coach Williams has been telling me for about a month now, you got, listen, we're going to do a question and answer. People are going to have no cards. They're going to be able to tell you what they want. They want to ask questions. No Eagles questions. And then, um, but, but then he says, I said, well, coach, how long do you want me to talk for? Because, you know, I got this year in me now, and I feel like Chicago media, three million people, man, I'm just, I'm ready. I could talk, I could sit here. He said, you can go like 10 to 12 minutes. I go, coach, I left phase two today with the players to fly in here to talk 10 minutes. So, but, so I always tell our guys, and I got 51% now. And I, and I used to never work with the team, so now tonight I got 51%, so I might not go 10 minutes. Um, but before we get started, um, you know, being busy a lot and, and going day to day and trying to think, what are, what are, what are you know, I want to reach everybody. I want to be able to talk to everybody tonight. And there's a bunch of young kids that are in here that are going to be playing a game in, in a couple of weeks. And, but before you get into any of that, I think it's important that I, I didn't get a chance to do this and, and I got to talk to my mom, but one of the questions the other day was, I had, a, I had a speaking engagement and they asked me, they said, one of the first questions they said was, you know, coach, um, uh, you, what, what's one of your biggest strengths? And I said, my immediate answer was just treating people right and treating people with respect. And then the next follow-up question to that was, well, where, where did that, where do you think that started? And, um, you know, that, that was easy. And my, my, my mom's here today, and she just picked me up from the Harrisburg Airport. And that, that's, where, that's where it started for me. So the reason why I'm, I'm here right now and standing up here, football, X's and O's, all that, that stuff's easy. But what I'm finding out in this whole thing is that when you treat people the right way and, and you, you respect people and, and you don't change, um, that goes a long way. And here I am as the head coach of the Chicago Bears, and there's a lot of fans in here that are and aren't. But she taught me from, when, like Denny was talking about here, as a little kid in those midget midget games, she always taught me, you know, how to, how to treat people. In life, in sports and in life, we always have failures, right? There's, and then how do you come back from failures and success? My most recent failure is that damn double doink everybody keeps talking about. And who in the hell ever put that picture there for me to sign with my face? That ain't getting signed. It's never going to be what you want, but it's how you come back from it. And so mine right now, personally, and our team is bouncing back from the failure of not being able to, uh, to win in the playoffs. And I think um, one of the things that we're talking about right now with our team is the, the Virginia Cavaliers and how they just were the 16th, the one seed, they got beat by the 16th seed last year. And I mean, they, they were getting ready to crucify that team and the coach and then they come back and they, they I mean, what, what an amazing job by them to come back. And I think the stat is right. They were losing in their last four games. They were losing in the game under 14 seconds to go, and they won all four games. That's pretty impressive. So we're using that right now with our guys. Of how do we, you know, how, how do you use these? The, the, the examples are everywhere. So um, I'll get, we can get into that later on with any of the questions, but there's going to be failures, and how do you come back from it? My biggest one was when I was in high school, and everyone in here knows about it, the interception I threw against Berwick. And, that, that made me who I am right now. So I'm kind of, I'm actually, and fans don't want to hear it, but in a way, it's helped me out, and it's made me a better person, husband, father, all that. Um, the next one is, is, is BU, and this is the biggest one. And I'll, I'll tell you how, for those that don't know, how that started was, um, so a year and a half ago, when this all went down, we were, I was coaching in Kansas City. <laughs> Coach Reed handed the play call duties to me uh, with about, I don't know, six games to go. We make it to the playoffs. We play uh, the Titans in the playoffs, and we're doing well. I think we're up 20 to or 21 to nothing. And they come back, and Mariota catches one off his helmet, throws it to himself, does like three spins, and walks in the end zone for a touchdown in the second half. And that's how the rest of the, the, the half went. We lost. 
Well, the crazy thing was, was the next day, I was going to have, um, I was going to have my uh, my interview for the Chicago Bears and the Indianapolis Colts. So it was a big day. But we were going to do, I was going to do it after a win, and that didn't, that wasn't the case. So I was crushed in the locker room afterwards, just devastated. And there's a failure, right? And and so I was initially going to go right across the street, start prepping, cleaning things up for the next morning early, get ready to head on in. I couldn't do it. I, I didn't want nothing to do with that interview that time of night. So I drove, I was driving home and I had a bunch of text messages. And by the way, for those of everybody, this is, so I get like uh, a lot of text messages after wins. And then it's crazy because then I get a little bit after losses. <laughs> but, but. I appreciate those that text after losses. It means it, me, it, uh, it, it, it trust me, it, it, it means something. So, um, but anyway, I'm driving home and my oldest son, he's 13 at the time, Braden, he calls me up and says, Dad, he goes, uh, he, he, he goes, uh, I go, what's up, buddy? He goes, you doing okay? I go, yeah. He goes, Dad, did you call the plays in the second half? <laughs> I'm miserable and I just I started laughing. I go, yeah, dude, I did. I, I, I called the place. I would, Dad, you still gonna get that interview tomorrow morning? <laughs> and I said, I, I said, yeah, I said, hey, yeah, I'm gonna get the interview. I'm fine. Everything's fine. You know, I gotta regroup. Said, no, no, Dad, I'm serious. You're gonna get that interview. And, and I said, yeah. I said, yeah. So I started talking the third time. He cut me off again. He said, Dad, I mean, are you gonna get that interview? And I said, I go, yes, right. Now. Here's the deal. Listen, I got two interviews tomorrow. I'll come home and see you. And I was just getting ready to tell him I'm getting to stop. I'm 13 years old. And he stopped me. I'm going, Dad, in that interview tomorrow, just use you. And so to me, what that did is it made me think, you know what? Dang, man, I got all this stuff going on. I got all this stuff going on. I'm getting crushed right now. I feel so bad for our team. I got the biggest day of my life tomorrow morning. The biggest day of my life. I've worked so hard to get to this point. Driving 99 miles one way at 3.30 in the morning, sleeping for six out of seven nights on a blow up mattress for a year. And all this to get to this point. And my 13 year old son's telling me to beat you. And, and so what it did is it pulled me back. And, uh, and, and so my agent called me and he said, he said, hey, he goes, the bears are calling. They want to know because my interview is scheduled at 8 o'clock. You want to push it back to 9 to 10? I said, no. Call him up, tell him I want to go to 7. And, and so uh, he did. And so I, I, I went home, tucked my kids in bed, I went back to Arrowhead. I was up till 3 30, 4 in the morning, got my stuff ready, went to bed, drove back home, got up 6 30. I met George McCaskey, the owner, our, our chairman, and our chairman. And so I get out. In the hotel, I'm walking in, he gets me, and he grabs me and says, first thing he says to me is, uh, he goes, hey, did you know my great grandfather started with Cassidy High? And, and me, I should have known him. So, do the prep for me. And I didn't. And, and I'm like, oh, you're honest, right? You gotta be honest. I said, I said, no. Coach, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, Scott. So, he goes, to drop. He goes, yeah. So I we start small talk and we get upstairs, we sit in the room, and then this the president, general manager, and then myself. And all of a sudden there's this Candy's presser sitting right in front of me on my chair. So I'm thinking, okay. I'm starting to feel good. Like this is this might be this I'm starting to feel so they start asking a couple questions. I'm like three to four minutes into it. And I said, you know what? Because in the combine. When you're at the combine, these players are scripted. These college kids are scripted. So you sit in there for 60 interviews in three days, and they're in there, and their agents are telling them everything worth a step. And it, 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 so now, I'm, I kind of, I got it. I got figured out. But anyway, I wasn't going to be that guy. So like three, four minutes into my interview, I told the story that I just told you. And I said, you know what? If I'm going to get this head coach on job, I'm going to tell the story. And, and I started telling them, and I said, so everything you get from me, uh, in here it, it, it's going to be me. It's not going to change in five, six, seven years, etc. You're getting me. And so I, I started telling the story and I looked over and George had that, this kind of 
red eyes, I was, and I was like, okay, yeah, here we go, now just be you. So I go through four and a half, five hours, and, I'm just, and I get to the end, and, uh, uh, he, you know, I'm telling him I'm ready, I want this job. And I started telling him about why I wanted to, blah, 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 I was going on and on, and George cut me off, and in the back I looked at him, and he had those red eyes were back, and he says, hey, Matt, he goes, stop right there. He goes, whatever you do tonight, when you go to bed, and you tuck Braden into bed, he said, tell him good advice. And so, I knew, I, I thought I was probably, you know, I was, I was feeling good. <laughs> so, I walk out, I kind of boss off, the GM comes out, and he starts talking. So, I go to my interview with him, and later on that night, Brian, my gentleman, and my son's at dinner. All of that, okay, to say this, that be you that's on my shoe chef, okay, what that is is a reminder. Every day in so many ways, not just to be you and call the right plays right here, or be you, I don't have that on there to, to tell me what to do on fourth or one, or when to go through, et cetera. What that is is to every day just remind myself to remind our players to be you. And that part is every single person that's sitting in here right now has a different personality. And, and uh, one of the things that I was going to do when I hired my staff was I was going to hire a lot of people that were similar to me. And I found out from them that that's not the way to go. So the BU part as well is that we all have qualities in here, okay? Young guys, young ladies, as you're going here, we all have different qualities. Some are quiet, some are loud, some are funny, some aren't funny, some think they are, they're not, okay? Some are big, some are little. We all are different. Um, extra uh, type A personality, et cetera. And, and that's what makes our team, I think, so special. So when we went from a, a team the previous year to the team we were this past year, letting our personality show, the dancing, the club dub, um, uh, it's just too important. So if you're going to be successful, okay, you take that and then you take what my family taught me on how to treat people, and then you take honesty, you take no regrets, I talked about it two years ago, persistence over resistance. Okay? You take high character people. That's what we're dealing with right now. That's why I think we're successful as an organization and a team. We're not good enough yet. They know that. Our team knows that. We're going to be bad. But, but you deal with high character people. So between my family telling me that, my wife, my mother-in-law, stay grounded, stay humble, be a good person, treat people the right way. That's important. So, the plane ride, what do I do? Well, uh, there's going to be failures, and we can talk forever, I quit. There's also there's going to be uh, successes. And so the other part of that, failures and successes, is we had win streaks this year um, of 5-4 five, four, and 3-4 five, four, and three for our win streaks. You know what? As a first year rookie head coach, that was, that was harder than any of the losing streaks we had, was to keep them from not being complacent. And that's where we're at right now as a team. So, um, and whatever you do, it, it, it's a matter of making sure that you're always, every single day, you're appreciative of what you have and you treat people, you know, the right way.